they mark report cards now. What is it, one to it's five? Safe. It's it's one to four. Oh. Four okay. being the best. Right. And one, of course, being, well, this kid got ones across the whole board. And then again, this is the first marking period. It's only November. And she's told that her son's not going to progress. Well, did she ever think about having her son tested? Maybe he has a learning disability. That's what I'm thinking. Either and that I or... He's already, I, think, I think he's in one of the, one of the uh, classes that have two teachers. So I don't know. Maybe he needs a parent. Well, a lot of a lot of I don't, don't want to get into it. A lot of classes have push-in teachers. Okay, now these teachers were meant to assist students who needed extra help. But I know quite a few teachers who were push-in teachers, and what they wind up doing is they wind up assisting the regular teacher because if they're only in the class for two or three students, and those students seem to be doing okay for the time being. If somebody else has a question, you know, they go over to the other student and help them out. So, you know, it's almost like having a co-teacher in the room. Mm -hmm. well, that, that makes well, sense. Yeah. Well, what they're doing also now is every, like, for every child that doesn't need, like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to say this to be politically correct. And, you know, I don't want to... On this to, show, don't, don't worry about it. Like, I don't want to put people down, but, like, the students like Samantha who, who do well, they interchange them. Like, one year, they're supposed to be with kids that have challenges, let's say. So Samantha already had that in first grade, and she also had it last year. I don't know why she had it two in two years in a row, but well, a lot of t a lot of times. Hmm? No, I was just going to say a lot of times what they do in the class is students who are excelling and doing very well. All right, teachers use them as coaches for those students in the class that maybe need a little bit of extra help, okay, and they well, help them along. That's what I was going to say, because I got very upset last year in the beginning of the year when I found out that she was in a class like that, but they explained to me what you just said, and I was grateful for that. I was also grateful because my best friend's sister, who's a para, actually... When it was, had a student in that class, so I felt a little more comfortable knowing that she was there and she was able to watch Samantha because Samantha got bullied a lot last year, and um, it made Samantha a little more secure, like feeling confident and secure, knowing that she was in there. And I said to her, "I said, listen, Aunt Gina is going to be one of the teachers in the class." You cannot address her as Aunt Gina. You have to say Miss Gina, you know, because now you're in school. <laughs> and it was great. This year now, she's in a regular class. She only has one teacher. And there's 25 kids in the class. That's not bad. Well, in elementary school, 25 is a lot. Is you it? know, yeah. Um, what grade is she in? Third? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In elementary school, they try to keep the numbers down. But, I mean, I remember having 37 kids in, in one of my classes, you know. Uh, but that was middle school. And I, remember from, I remember from first grade to sixth grade, there was 32 kids in my class. In each grade, I had 32 kids in class. But then again, they didn't have as many... I, there's like eight, seven or eight third grade classes. When she started kindergarten, there were ten kindergarten classes. We only had two kindergarten Man. classes when I went to That's school. A lot. That's a lot of kindergarten grade, we only classes. Had one. They got a big school. A lot more students. A lot more students. 
that's all it is. Well, I think there's about there's oh, seven there's seven hundred. There's almost a thousand kids in her public school. How many? There's between seven hundred and oh, there's like almost a thousand students in her public school. Really? Yeah. Hey, listen. And she's the believe, believe it or not, she's pretty much the minority in her in her school. What's the majority? Uh, Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern. Okay. Mhm. Mm I don't know what the uh, breakdown is in Staten Island. Hey, listen. You know, uh, one of your jobs as an intern is to listen to some of her music. And create and uh, give us your opinion. And, that is true. Uh, That's one of my hats. And right now, I am sort of auditioning new song that we're going to play in a Christmas show. You know, from the same so source. Is that the from... one that you played last week or the week before? Mm hmm. Okay, this is a new yeah, one. Play... This is a new one. It says, uh, What Can I Do? This, the uh, artist is called Comfortable Cats from England. And let's go here. Let's see what it sounds like. Tell me what I gotta do To get my present out of you So won't you please Oh, please I call you every night Every night With a feeling something ain't right Too late to call you Yeah, right So tomorrow Makes no difference at all 
I didn't like it. You didn't like it. And okay, you don't have to. No, no good, huh? Thumbs down for the holidays. Yeah. Eh, okay. But it's not my cup of tea. You're okay. Well, uh, we have other things to discuss besides Common Core and music, actually. Oh, I have one more song we'll put up for her. There's yeah. something I wanted to bring up to you guys, something that I read, but then I play no song. This is the last one. The singer is Rick Tunstall. The name of the song is Bridging Time, and it's not a Christmas song. And he's from the United States. Yeah, you want my you want my opinion on that one? 